Welcome back to Achievement Report. I'm your host, Danny Flores. Que rollo con todos ustedes. Hopefully, you guys are having a wonderful Friday. But guys, today we're going to be talking about Carly Russell. In the last episode, you guys wanted me to speak on it. And I was kind of confused. I was like, yo, I'm seeing this. You know, I'm seeing people talk about it, but... I quite don't know what's going on. So today we're gonna be looking into it guys, but before we get started, go grab your snacks, come back, sit back and relax. I love Danny. So let's look into Carly Russell guys, because a lot of updates have um, came out yesterday um, or when I'm filming this, and I don't think they're good updates. They're not good updates, they're, they're you know, Things people were already saying. So if you guys don't know what happened, here's the rundown. So a 25 year old by the name of Carly Russell went missing in an interstate in Alabama. This happened on July 13th. It's being said that she left work around 8.20 p.m. She ordered food. She went to go pick up the food. She left the restaurant, then she went home. During this car ride home, she was on the phone with her sister-in-law, her brother's girlfriend. And then all of a sudden she tells her sister-in-law, hey, I see a toddler on the side of the road. And she decided to pull over. But this is what her parents said. Well, um, she was talking to um, our son's girlfriend on, on the phone. Um, she told her that it looks like there's a little child on the side of the road that looks like a, to a small toddler. And um, she told her, don't get out the car. And she said, I'm not, I'm going to call now. I won't pull over and call 911 or call 911. She called not put her on hold, called 911. And she clicked back over and told her that 911 was, um, or that the police were on the way. And the next thing our um, son's girlfriend heard was Carly asking the child if they were okay. So she evidently got out the car. Um, she asked the child if they were okay, maybe two or three times. Um, she didn't hear a response from a child on the other end and she did hear a scream and then she could tell there was maybe some type of shuffling and um, the phone dropped to the ground. And from there, all she could hear was background noise. By that time, she was coming into the room to alert myself, son, what had just transpired. She kept the line open. She didn't hang up. I was yelling Carly's name. We were all yelling Carly's name. I, I picked up my phone to call Carly's phone, um, just even though I knew that line was open, um, with our son's girlfriend, it was just like, I, I just felt, um, yeah, I felt I needed to try to do something to try to reach her since she wasn't answering us when we were calling her name and all we could just hear was like background noise. And from there, um, I came and got my husband from the bedroom and told him a brief synopsis of what had just transpired. We needed to um, throw on some clothes and go to her location. We do share um, our location through Life 360. And so it was pinging that she was at a particular street. However, when we got there, we did not see her car. And what we realized once the police came to where we were is that because her car was on the interstate, it was pinging at the street we went to because that street was right be behind and below that interstate 459. So she calls the police. The police arrive within five minutes, but they don't see a sign of a toddler or Carly being there. Let me go ahead and play you the phone call. I am on Interstate 459, and there is a kid just walking by their cell. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Where, where on 459 are you? Um, um, I'm right next to the exit, exit 10 by the Hoover Med, like to get off by the Hoover Med. Okay, so you're before that exit? Yes. Okay, and were you, you headed southbound or northbound? Uh, like towards Tuscaloosa uh, or towards 280? Towards Tuscaloosa. Okay. And was the child on the left or right side? On the right side. Were they walking uh, northbound or southbound? southbound? Um, they're walking towards Tuscaloosa. <coughs> walking southbound? Or how old do they look? Um, towards a toddler? Like, maybe like three or four? Did you pull over with them? Or are you still with them? Yes. Okay, you're, are you with the child right now? No, I'm not. I didn't get out of the car. I'm just, I, I can see them though. Can you, do you mind staying and keeping an eye on them until we get there? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, what kind of car are you in? I'm in a red Mercedes Benz. 
And then sedan or SUV? SUV. I mean, it's a, a, a sedan. Sorry. Can you put your hazards on for me? Yeah, they're on. Okay. Did you talk to the child at all, or did you say anything to them? No. Okay. No. Do they look like they're injured? No, they don't. Are they white, black, Hispanic, or Asian? They're white. Okay. Is it male or female? I think it's a boy, a little boy. Right now? Okay. So is he wearing clothes? Yes. Okay. What is he wearing? Um, it's a white t-shirt, and it doesn't look like he has any pants on. It looks like a diaper. And you don't see any cars anywhere? No, no cars anywhere. Okay. All right, what's your name? My name is Carly Russell. And you don't see any injuries on the child from where you're at, correct? No, no, but I can't really see them that good. Okay, try to keep an eye on them for the best you can because I don't want you to lose track of them. Um, okay. All right, and do they have shoes on? No. Uh, Not that I can see. I can't really see that one. Okay. All right. I've got them on the way, okay? Just try to stay, keep an eye on them, but officers are on the way, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, so obviously this went viral on social media, on the main media, the news networks, everywhere. It went viral. A lot of people were searching for her and her parents made a search team so they could go in the woods and look for her. But there was a few things that were kind of weird because in the video they showed us, the interstate video, you don't really see a toddler and you see her driving on the shoulder for a very long time. Like if you're gonna go on the shoulder, you stop immediately, right? No, but she kept driving on the shoulder for like, I wanna say a good 40 seconds. She gets out the car, she goes around to the passenger sides and opens the door. If you're there, if you're stopping for a toddler, wouldn't you just open, like get out your car, go see what the heck is wrong with the toddler, see if they need help. And also it was said that she didn't take anything with her but a few items and we'll get to those few items in a little bit because those are the big updates that came out yesterday or two days ago the next day something weird happened because a 911 phone call came from a hotel 12 minutes 12 minutes away where carly disappeared the front desk actually told the police that carly's parents and family members were there because they received a call from carly from that hotel 754 unclassified complaint 1466 Montgomery Highway at the Red Roof Inn. The front office, her caller, family members at this location saying they received a call from the female that's missing, Carly Russell. 754 family members are saying they received a call from the female saying she was at this location. 754 and route. 760 1851. 26 of the responding units. I uh, just spoke with the front desk clerk. Uh, they said that the, that the family is not being hostile or anything like that, but that there was about six car loads of people that that have just shown up over there. Five four copy. Did the front desk have anybody checked in under that name? Negative. And according to the front desk, uh, the, the the message that the family got did not state which red roof in. Uh, it, they, they don't know if it's going to be West Avia or another location. So everything's already a little weird, right? But it gets weirder because 48 hours after she went missing, Carly finally showed up. Call came into 911 and I believe it was Carly's parents saying, yo, Carly showed up. She showed up barefooted. She was banging on her door and allegedly she was unresponsive and not breathing. But then when the police got there, she was okay. So as per seizure, I guess they have to take her to the hospital. So they ended up taking her to the hospital to see if everything was okay. But this is where everything gets interesting. Carly's boyfriend actually took it online to say that she might've got kidnapped or something like that. He used the word kidnapper. So people are assuming obviously that yo, she might have got kidnapped and people were wondering like yo if she got kidnapped like why is she making a statement that way people in alabama could be aware of what's going on like yo if there's someone out there using a toddler to lure girls in yo we have to know about this because it's a danger to our society but 
No, Harley did not speak out and it is what it is, right? But the big update, the big update everyone was waiting for. Yesterday, the Hoover PD actually did a press conference and guys, when I tell you this is shocking, it's shocking. So, you know, I told you that after work, she went to a restaurant to get some food. And then after that, she decided to drive and call her sister, right? Well, it turns out that after work, she really went to Target to buy Cheez-Its and crackers or something like that before getting on the highway. Why do you need Cheez-Its and crackers? Like, bro, is it for the road? Do you live that far? I don't know. Weird. She also states that she was taken by a man and female and they had a baby. She heard her baby crying. They took her to a house. They took her clothes off and then they took pictures of her. And here's the weird part. They fed her Cheez-Its. This is one of the biggest reasons why you shouldn't lie to the police or law enforcement because they found out a few days, actually a day or two before she went missing. They searched her phone and she was searching all types of things such as do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? How to get money out of a register without getting caught? She searched the movie Taken. And if you guys don't know the movie Taken, it's literally about abduction. What's the maximum age for an Amber Alert? Over police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Carly's wig and cell phone in the grass near the vehicle. Her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle with her Apple uh, watch in the purse. The food she ordered for Tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they located anywhere around the scene. Hoover Police deployed all available assets from the point in the search for Carly. Additional resources were called in to include our own drone unit, crime scene investigators, numerous detectives responded to the scene. Throughout the day Friday, Officers from surrounded local and federal agencies assisted Hoover police in the search for Carly Russell. Officers returned to the scene on 459 to conduct a thorough line search for evidence. K-9 teams from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded to check for any sign of Carly, the child that she claimed to see, and anything else that could be considered evidence in this case. Those searches all turned up empty. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at a residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car, and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot only to be captured again and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data included several internet searches in the days leading up to their disappearance 
that I think are very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th, at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. If this doesn't scream guilty, I don't know what does. Like my girl Carly, you, why did you do this? Why? You looked successful. You looked happy on your Facebook pictures. Why would you go ahead and do this? And I'm, I'm, yes, I'm saying here, I don't believe Carly at all. Even the police said they don't see any harm right now within the city. I feel like, yo, they're saying, they're literally saying she's making this up, but everything's in my opinion, right? I'm just lost for words. What is it with people doing this nowadays? Like first I heard of Rudy Farias and now this, what, what's going on? But guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you know this was a hoax? This was fake? Let me know down below. I don't know. You know, the police is still saying they're investigating, but I feel like they're getting close. <laughs> they're getting close to just call it quits and say, yo, yeah, you're guilty. But guys, as always, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I'm, I'm sorry. It was probably a shorter show than normal. If you're new here, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'm out. Peace.